In this video, I'd like to discuss the importance of developing team goals in the overall uh, process of developing effective teams. And uh, to do that today, we're going to focus on what are called the four C's of developing team goals. And they are clear goals, cooperative goals, challenging goals, and a commitment to goals. So let's start at the top and discuss what we mean by developing clear goals. Clear goals means that everybody's on the same page, everybody's pulling in the same direction, and everybody has a very clear understanding of what the group is attempting to accomplish and, and what the purpose of that group is. So when you're developing these clear goals, um, first of all, it's important to think smart. And um, what we mean by that, that's an acronym that we use to, to describe the goal setting process. We need to set specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-based goals. And so we need to think smart when we're setting these goals. We need to have specific goals that have, uh, you know, and that are measurable, that are specific and measurable, that they're, that they're uh, able to be identified probably numerically or within, you know, uh, some time frame like that, that they can be measured. So we know when we've accomplished these things. Uh, it's better to have a goal that says, you know, um, we're going to, you know, do X amount of things and be very specific about it, than have something to say, we're just going to do better, right? We're going to do better. And uh, so we need those goals to be specific. We need them to be measurable. We need them to be attainable and realistic. We need them to be relevant to what we're supposed to be working on. And we need them to be time-based. We have to have a, a clear date of, of completion in mind um, for these things. We can't just have it be you know, uh, unspecified out there in the, in the ether. So we need to think smart when we're setting these clear goals so that they'll be easily understandable and clearly identifiable. We also need to use concrete language when we're setting these goals. Again, uh, concrete language has to do with uh, the, uh, the opposite of abstract language. So we can see here abstract language is very vague and, and loosely identified, whereas concrete language has a very specific meaning. So when we're setting goals, and, and part of setting SMART goals is using concrete language. So we're not just using terms like a lot more or some more or a little bit and things like that. We're putting specific concrete language um, so that, that it's easily identified and understandable by both the team members and by people outside of the team. So, um, so we also need to bear in mind that this may be influenced by group mandate. If you're part of an organization that has said this is what you're going to accomplish, then we need to keep that in mind. We need to work within the, the, the framework of that mandate of our group, but that doesn't mean we can't still be more specific in setting goals as to what we're going to accomplish and when we're going to accomplish it within the the structure of that uh, that group mandate that's set out by maybe outside um, forces. So, so maybe influenced by group mandate, but that doesn't keep us from setting those clear, smart goals and using concrete language when we do so. Okay. So we need to set clear goals. The other, another step that we need to do is, is to set cooperative goals. Cooperative goals. And cooperative goals require what we call independent or interdependent effort, meaning everybody working together and that everybody is influenced by the others. And, and uh, so what you want to avoid is, like we see here, you want to avoid people rowing in different directions. Everybody ought to be pulling in the same direction when you're in this boat. You want everybody rowing in the same direction because if you're if you're rowing in opposite directions, you're just going to be at a standstill, or it's at the very best going to slow you down significantly. So, so these cooperative goals mean that everybody needs to be working together in an inter, inter, interdependent way, sorry, interdependent fashion. And what we mean by that is that that group members are then sharing information freely. They're not holding things back. They're not you know being secretive about things. They're also offering advice, constructive advice, and helpful advice on how group members might improve what they're doing, or advice that might improve the overall uh, group output. They're sharing rewards when they come in, when, you know, so group members aren't um, you know, independently just uh, taking in these rewards and keeping them to themselves. They're, they're sharing the wealth with the other group members, understanding that it's a total group effort. And they understand that, that they need to apply their abilities optimally, and groups need to do that as a whole. We need to make sure that we're applying everybody's abilities optimally, that we're applying everybody's strengths uh, and putting people in a position where they can be successful and where they can su succeed and where they can shine. Because when the individual shines, then the group shines, and it reflects well on everybody. So that's what we mean by interdependent effort. Everybody pulling in the same direction, everybody rowing in the same direction. Okay? So we need that for those cooperative goals. Sometimes you have what we call a superordinate goal. And that, that's just sound as something that almost inherently pulls people together. Um, we see that in, in situations, you know, large situations like uh, during World War II, for example, we saw these superordinate goals where people put aside their individual uh, needs and desires so that, 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 for example, the soldiers could have what they need. We put away, you know, maybe, uh, you know, fancy automobile production so that companies could focus on making ammunition and making tanks and making jeeps and things like that that the, the army would need. So, uh, so we put 
any superordinate goals we put uh, we almost automatically put the group goals ahead of our own personal goals because of this larger issue uh, at hand right so and we don't know it doesn't have to be a world war for that to happen sometimes we just see things in the workplace and we say okay this is bigger than just me and big, bigger than you and so so it automatically kind of um, breeds that cooperativeness that you need in these groups but even when you don't have those superordinate goals this, these cooperative goals and these these goals are important uh, that everybody um, be on the same page and that everybody be rowing in the same direction in addition uh, to cooperative goals, uh, we also need to have challenging goals. People don't uh, people don't do well when when things are easily achievable and they're just not challenged at all. So, as a group, we need to set some goals that that cause us to stretch a little bit, right? We need to raise the bar. There's the classic story of Steve Jobs and the development of the Macintosh, and if you're uh, familiar with that, I mean, he he commented on you know, told, telling his team that he was going to make a dent, and they were going to make a dent in the universe, right? They were going to do something so spectacular. And what's really inter interesting about that story is that Steve Jobs was not a a technology guy. He was not a computer guy, really. He was a he was more of a design person, right? So he said he looked at all these clunky PCs that were being created, and he said, "This is just ugly, and we can do better, and we can do more." So he said to his people, "You know, here's what we're going to make." Here's my vision. Here's what we're going to make. I don't know how it's going to happen because I don't know the technology and I don't know how to build this stuff and I don't know how we're going to manufacture it, but this is where we're going. I mean, what a challenging goal. We're going to create something that's never been done, do it in a way that's never been done before. And he laid this out in front of him and and his team achieved it. Obviously, they created the Macintosh and, and it changed the, the personal computing world, really. So uh, And so we need to raise that bar. We need to set challenging goals, right? But we also have to be realistic. I mean, we need to be realistic, but we need to stretch ourselves. We can't, you know, just say, you know, if I'm sitting in my living room, I can't just say to my buddies, you know, let's go build a spaceship. We don't have the technology. We don't have the brains for that, right? So th that might be a little bit too much, but but your your goals should be realistic and within your grasp, but they also should stretch you and the other group members because that's when you're going to see the best come out of your team members there as well. So, And you may not be able to solve all the world's problems, but you could maybe solve a piece of that problem, right? So being realistic may not, it may involve, you know, not changing the entire world, but, or making that huge dent in the universe, but maybe you can help put, take a piece of that, right? You can, you can solve one problem of it and solve something that's relevant in your own world and within your sphere of influence there. So we can solve a piece of that problem and still have some challenging goals. So, and finally, the, the, one of the most significant parts of all this is that you have to have commitment to those goals from your group members. Everybody's got to be committed, 100% committed to these goals to put their all into it. Again, rowing the same direction, being on the same page. You can use whatever cliche you want, but everybody's got to be all in uh, on these goals. So, and this is so critical for team success. If you have somebody who's an outlier and, and pulling in a different direction, then it's just going to do nothing but drag your team down. Um, and, it, and it only takes one. So everybody's got to be committed to these goals. One way you can help achieve that is by uh, having team members be involved in the goal setting. So, so studies have shown that team members are more likely to be committed to the goals of a group when they have a voice in setting those goals and creating those goals. So consider, uh, whenever possible, that, that you need to involve group members in, in setting those goals so that you can achieve that commitment. So in the four C's we have here, they need to be clear, need to be cooperative, they need to be challenging, and they need to inspire commitment and, and involve commitment from your group members. Okay. So when you have those four C's, then you're, you're setting the stage well um, for, for, for uh, having a clear, effective team goals and developing those team goals well, and that will lead you to the process of having an effective uh, team then as well. If you have questions about this or anything else related to small group communication, please feel free to email me. I'm always happy to answer emails and discuss things via email. And until then, happy communicating.